Hey, I just got a phone call from a contractor who's going to place concrete tomorrow. And where I'm at, that means it's minus 16 Celsius or zero Fahrenheit, somewhere in that range, depending on what it does tomorrow for weather. And we do that all the time. We're placing concrete almost every day right now up here with this kind of temperature. And we actually go quite a bit colder and we place concrete because we can get it so the concrete's hot. We have uh, preheated aggregate, preheated water, and everything works. So I asked him if I'd be allowed on site, and he, he said, absolutely, I can come. And so I'm going to drive up there, and it's only, a, I don't know, an hour away. So I'll drive up there, and we'll see what it looks like. So My window's got snow on it. It's kind of cold. Minus 16, and yes, we are doing concrete work. So I have to go today. Let's see, I'm going to Stonewall again. So let's go there. I'm going to get there at figuring it out 901. Concrete's at 9, so I better get going. here in Canada we don't stop we just continue to place concrete and if you see here on the street the concrete truck they come preheated all the all the aggregate is preheated the water is preheated and so we're putting it in the wall at the right temperature and the trick at this temperature is you can see the sun dog up in the sky there we we do about two rows high of, of concrete maybe 24 to 36 inches deep and then we cover the top of the wall. Here they're using three inch foam insulation. And what that's gonna do is trap that heat in the wall and it's gonna preheat all the rebar. And that way when they come around on the second pass, no, no concrete will freeze to the rebar. Um, if there's any snow at the bottom of the wall, we've gone ahead with pails of water and, and we've just drizzled water down to melt the snow so that the concrete goes straight to the footing. So that's how we're doing it in winter time. Hey, we're back on the site here. This is 48 hours after the concrete pour and things are looking really good. I put my meat probe into the side of the wall here. That's your typical buy off the shelf $20 uh, meat thermometer. And I just poked it through the foam and hit the concrete. And it's only the tip that hits the concrete. So if I get a good temperature out of that, I know that the concrete's gonna be even warmer than that, you know, because of the type of thermometer it is. Ideally, I would be able to use my infrared but with this being all foam, what am I going to use the infrared for, really? I can't get in there to do it. I'd have to remove this stuff on the top. And, you know, I really just don't want to do that. I want to keep that heat in the wall as much as I can and let it do its job. So for a fox box job, really all we do is pour concrete and cap the top because the outside's already insulated. We have this 2 and 5 eighths inch thick insulation on both sides. So the concrete can do its job inside the... The moisture stays in it longer, and it keeps that hydration process happening. So what, right now, if I look at this, I'm at 16.2. It's bouncing 16.2, 16.3, 16.4. That's where it's sitting. That's Celsius. If I click that for Fahrenheit, we're at 61.3 Fahrenheit. 
So I know the concrete's gonna be warmer than that, and that means the hydration process has done its job, and the mass of concrete now is gonna hold that for the next day or two, three days, and um, do its job. It, it'll be a, a perfectly good job. Um, and it will meet all the building codes, it'll exceed the building codes. And it's just because an ICF is insulated. <clears throat> okay, we're back. It's Monday. So that pour was last Wednesday, and now it's Monday. It's actually late in the day on Monday. I had a busy day today, but all good. I gotta get this video done. So I phoned the contractor just now to find out what the concrete was like now that it's what, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, five days, four and a half, five days after the pour. They just finished taking that foam off the top of the wall, getting ready to put the floor on. And he said, there's puddles of water still on top. And I knew it would be. It's just, that's such a normal thing with us. People think that concrete's just gonna freeze because it's cold outside, but it holds so much heat. There's so much mass there that it just holds that heat that long. So no external heat. Just foam up on the top of the wall, and that hydration process inside just cooks that wall. It doesn't get too hot, but it keeps that heat just generating that whole time. And that, that's a perfectly good job. That's absolutely fine. And I actually took the temperature probe. I went actually for this job because I was shooting video. I needed something, and I was wondering how to do it, so I got this meat thermometer. And unfortunately, in the video, the numbers, if it turns on here, that the numbers didn't show up in the video. I had shot video with it up against it and pictures of it, and it, it didn't show up, which was kind of disappointing. But this one goes from minus 40 to plus 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And minus 40 is the same Celsius or Fahrenheit. That's where they meet up. So this works. Um, I don't know that it's that accurate, but it does work. The temperature does change when you poke it through the foam. So that's all I did is just poke it through and when I hit the concrete, I measured it. It probably took two or three minutes before it gave me that temperature that I needed, before it was accurate, before it balanced itself out. But it worked just fine. So there's, there's ways we can back this up, just so that you know, we do have documentation. This is a document that we put together that has all of the different testing that we've done. And it has charts in here that show you the cement content that you need in the concrete. We have both imperial and metric in here and how long it's gonna take before that hydration kicks in, things like that. Um, there's another very, very good document. I really have appreciated this document. It has helped me many, many times in the winter time. I've been doing this for over 20 years now and this document has been a lifesaver. This came out in 2002, so it's actually pretty old already but this technology doesn't change. And what you do to get this is you just go online to the Portland Cement Association job site or website job site. And that's www.cement.org. I'll put it up on the screen right here. In there, you're gonna find all kinds of really good documents. This is 34 pages of fun, how to place concrete in cold weather and what it's gonna do for you and whether you're gonna be able to okay is what they use in all their charts here. Um, average air temperature, concrete temperature, and ICF R value, and then it's gonna tell you if you're okay pouring at a certain temperature. So they have all the different charts in here, very good document. Um, another document that's good that I got off this website, the PCA website, heat of hydration in concrete. And this, this helps to understand how we gain that heat within our walls. So that, that's about it. It's a very simple process. You just have to address it properly. And I'll just, I'll just throw this warning out. You have to get that snow out of the bottom of the wall. You cannot have snow or ice down at the bottom. I had a job about 18 years ago. I got a phone call saying, it's the summertime. I got a phone call saying, hey, we got mud on our floors. And what had happened is the contractor had placed concrete on top of snow. And that the whole job was held up with the rebar sticking out of the footing because concrete will not melt snow. Even if you have just a skiff of snow at the bottom, it will not melt it. Afterwards, you'll cut the foam out and you'll see a gap right through. So that's why we took water and we went with a drizzling of water before we placed the concrete. 
And you do that just before the hose is coming along. Because you don't want it sitting on the footing too long so that it freezes, right? Now, we went and poured water on top of that footing at the beginning. We waited 20 minutes. I went down there, I cut the foam, and I went underneath, and it was just starting to turn to slush. So 20 minutes at minus 18 or zero degrees Fahrenheit, everybody thinks it's going to freeze instantly. Absolutely not. Water will just sit on top of a frozen footing and will not freeze immediately. I've seen that over and over and over again. And that concrete didn't freeze either. I measured that concrete temperature at the bottom of the wall right above the footing. And it went down to 8 degrees Celsius is what I measured. And I would think it just gained strength from that point on. Um, I think code is, is 5 degrees Celsius. They want, it, they want you to be 5 degrees or higher. So we easily, easily got that. So this job was very good. It was a very fun job to do. I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any other ideas for videos that you'd like to see me do, just put them down in the notes below. And if I can answer any questions, I hope I can. And that's it. We'll see you next time. So what I have right now, 61.7. Good morning, Ron. I'm good. I'm just shooting video out in the cold, though. Can I? Uh, give me about 15 or 20, and I'll call you back. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Okay, my buddy Ron wants me to call him. Let's try that again.